Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Annie Making 3. And today I'm going to be giving you part 2 of what if Naruto became the vessel of a god. Remember to get this one too. 100 like as usual. Share this to all of your friends on your social media platform. And also guys, don't forget to go ahead and check out the brand new series over on Anime King of What If Naruto Was Gilgamesh Reincarnation. So go ahead and enjoy that guys. And remember if you're new and this is the first time you hear my voice, yes. I indeed have four more channels that I post What If on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and obliterate that red subscribe button and become a part of the Anime King family guys. Links will be down in the description. So without further ado or wasting more time, how about we jump right into this brand new episode. Let's begin now guys. So, a little bit of a recap from the last part that we left off. Two beings that were beyond their strength, shaking the very existence, they clashed against each other. Whoever or whatever they were, they came to an end in their battle that has been going on for eons now. However, in the final moments, the last being that reside was gravely wounded. It spread its power out and sent it through the universe. Whatever it was up to, it started something great. At Kanoha, a young boy known as Naruto Uzumaki found himself in a grave, grave danger that he wasn't going to survive. A bear, a massive, colossal bear was about to rip him to shreds. How did he end up here? Well, it was simple. Naruto was isolated. People treat him like he was a monster for reasons that he wasn't quite aware of. They did not care for him and he realized that from a young age. So instead of trying to make them notice him, he simply backed away. If they didn't want anything to do with him, he didn't want anything to do with them either so he backed away from all of them. Separating himself as he simply existed in the shadows. Away from everyone, not really partaking in anything or making any friends. He was the one that headed out this night. He loved to explore at nights. However, he came across a bear and he ran, cutting himself in the process and the thing found him as he was ripped to shreds. However, whether it was destiny or fate, one of those beans fired from that god slam right into the boy. The beer was disintegrated upon impact. When Naruto woke up, he was confused as he was completely fine. The nine-tailed fox that resided inside of him was also affected by this. Naruto went home as Harrison and the others came to investigate hearing and feeling the giant explosion. However, they could not find any trace of anything that was there. The next morning, Naruto found himself seeing something in the mirror. It was himself, however, his eyes were dark, his hair was orange. However, it turns out that it was the Kayubi. Something happened during the collision and the fox. It was no longer within the seal. They seemed to have permanently fused together. Permanently, they were not sure. As Naruto started to gain flashes and memories, things that he wasn't supposed to know, firstly about the nine-tailed fox, and then about his parents. Naruto spent the rest of the day thinking and staying by himself. He was upset. The fox killed his parents despite the fact that the beast was not in its right mind. Kurama could not make heads or tail of this situation. So for now he just has to go with it until 
they find a way to separate themselves from each other. As right now, he did not know what to do exactly. However, he did notice the changes in the boy's body and he decided to inform him as Naruto. Naruto made his opinion clear that he did not like the fox because he took his parents away from him despite the fact that he was under control it did not matter to him. His parents were not here and he would always remember that. The fox did not care though. He just wanted to find a way to get free from this boy. As a seal was there but the fox was no longer inside of it. Naruto also started to gain hate and resentment towards Harrison. Knowing these things and never telling him a single thing. Yes, he was getting angrier and angrier each day. Suspiciously angry. The first day of the academy there was a test to test their physical strength. And Naruto was obliterated by Sasuke like it was nothing. That is when the fox fully went into the details of his body. Naruto was unable to get tired. Yes, his stamina was unlimited. So, for the next few years he trained. Mainly physical training. His body seemed to be growing twice the rate than it normally would. And he could not get exhausted so over the years Naruto did at least a few million push-ups and a few million sit-ups. He ran for hundreds of hundreds of thousands of miles around the village keeping this away from everyone. He kept it away from everyone keeping it to himself as his strength grew and so did his anger and his hatred as well for Harrison for everything around him. Yes he was growing dark which was strange. As the night came when Mizuki decided to thief the scroll. However, Naruto was there. Him and his partner tried to take Naruto down, however. They were demolished. They underestimated him. Upon facing Harrison that night, Naruto was angry and upset with him. Finally telling him that he knew about his parents and about the Nine Tails as well. Harrison spinned a whole lot of crap to him about. Wanting to keep him protected, but the fact that he wouldn't even acknowledge to tell Naruto anything about this angered Naruto even more, as he pretended like he accepted those words when in truth he did not. As the day came, as Naruto found himself in the classroom, Hinata Hayuga, someone who liked him, was watching him as she saw what Naruto did as he carved a piece of the deck out with his finger just to show how strong he has become. As Naruto was placed on Team 7 with Sakura and Sasuke Uchiha, none of them really know each other. Sakura barely knew anything about Sasuke and she did not know a damn about Naruto because he was always by himself, he barely talked to anyone. As she tried to get to know him and talk to him, as their sensei arrived, Kakashi told them about the tests. When the day finally came as they all arrived out there, Naruto was still wanting to explore this vast world as a ninja to see what the world truly has to offer. However, when the day came, Naruto proceeded to simply plunge his fist into the ground and cause a drastic explosion. The force annihilate the ground. Not only his strength, however, the force inside of him, the power that he had dubbed the force was gaining more and more strength, a purple aura that he could use in many different ways. Kakashi was startled as Naruto grabbed the bells and crushed them. He knew exactly what he was doing. A distance away, a far far distance. Whoever that being was that spread his power throughout the universe. He was still here. Yes. And it was residing. And it seemed like he could sense the forces throughout the universe. AKA Naruto. So, yeah, guys, basically, let's be left off. You guys can switch across the place to for yourself. So, it's the beginning of this new episode. So much happened because of Naruto displaying how powerful he truly was. He was immediately taken to the Hokage for questioning. Harrison wanted to know this sudden great strength that he possessed. Where did this sudden great strength come from? As Naruto stuck to his story, which was actually truthful, he simply trained. Nothing more, nothing less, he trained. It's not like they could send a Yamanaka within his mind, trying to take over a Jinjuliki's mind 
is not a very good idea with the beast resided within their subconscious. Harrison proceeded to test Naruto. The man was astonished, confused that he really missed this much. He didn't have the faintest idea that Naruto was training, let alone becoming this strong. This was astounding as Naruto was taken to a doctor as well. This was your normal doctor as he was testing his chakra output. They run all sorts of tests on him with all sorts of sealing and fuinjutsu. However, the strange part about it was they could find absolutely nothing. It was something that Naruto found out about himself a few years ago. The first time that he awakened these strange abilities, when he ran away, they could not track him, they could not smell him. Using the Inuzakas, they couldn't find him at all, as Naruto realized that he could blend in. For most of his life, he was always behind the scenes, staying away from the public eye view. However, this was much greater. He could blend in with his surroundings and become one with it. He could do it so well that he could be standing right nearby and someone would even know that he was there until he said something or even touched them. If you were not looking directly at him, he could hide his presence completely. However, it went even further than that. Naruto realized that he could suppress himself to seem normal, but he was not. This purple energy that he called the force coursing through him was vastly stronger than chakra or anything else that the elemental nation ever produced. So he suppressed himself, so what Harrison and the doctor saw was nothing. Everything seemed normal yet they could not explain his strength or his speed. None of this, absolutely none of it making any sense. For hours, Harrison sat down and speak with Naruto. He even brought a Hayuga there. The Hayugas were keen on seeing if someone was lying. With their eyes, of course. However, they could not find anything. Nor could they see the purple energy coursing through Naruto veins. Even the Hayuga eyes were unable to detect it when he suppressed it. So we now find Harrison within his office. He still wanted to keep the identity of Naruto parent a secret. Away from the public eye view. Strangely enough, Naruto did not ask anything about revealing this. However, he was afraid that the boy did not trust him. Since he found out that Naruto possessed greater strength than he was supposed to, when he dealt with Mizuki, Hiruzen had him watch and everything seemed so normal. But now after that test, his strength wasn't just greater. It reminded him of Sanadis. But to have such powerful force at such a young age and the fact that Naruto did not tell a single soul about this as he decided to show it instead of informing him. Harrison was worried that the child did not trust him anymore because he kept the secret away from him and he was acting rather strange. He remembered seeing a look within his eyes and the old man was worried as he was afraid that this superhuman strength came from somewhere else and not from natural training. Could there be someone that Naruto was in touch with that actually gave him the information? Could his words be a lie? The problem was the Hayuga could not find a single trace that Naruto was lying. His pulse was calm, it was not elevated. His heartbeat was steady. Everything about him said that he was telling the truth and he has not lied not even once. But this really and truly does not make any sense. That is why he had Kakashi within the office, despite the test not going as they expected. Hiruzen had him here for a reason, and it was all about Naruto Uzumaki, or should he say, Naruto Namikaze. Time skip. Naruto eyes were closed, as he was on his balcony. He simply leaned back, as the fox was speaking to him. It seems, you've drawn more attention to yourself. Perhaps, he doesn't trust you anymore. Perhaps, said Naruto, he could sense them. There were three of them now. One, a few meters ahead. One at the left, the building across. 
and another one at the store. Across from the right. Hmm. It seems he was a high priority target now. As he was on great watch, the Hokage truly wished to know the secret behind his strength. However, Naruto was not going to tell him about the energy that was bestowed upon him neither was he going to tell him about the fox and the contact that they now share. Later that night, despite the fact that he did not need to sleep much more anymore, Naruto closed his eyes and found himself in a strange space. All around him was chaos, true utter chaos. Naruto was confused as he felt like he was a part of something much much greater. Worlds were being eviscerated. Planets turned to dust. He heard screams, chaos, destruction. Naruto was confused. As he pulled himself up, his eyes were glowing purple. He was awake. That is when he noticed that everything in the room was floating, even his bed. Before they all fell down, what the hell was that? It was Kurama that spoke. I have no idea, said Naruto. I thought you would know. I've never seen anything like that before. Perhaps it is a mystery that lie behind these powers. But what was it exactly, said Naruto. And it also triggered my psychic ability. Naruto held his hand out. As a glass of water nearby on the nightstand was covered in a purple glow. As it flew to his hand as he caught it. As Naruto proceeded to drink, he picked himself up as he decided to go for a run. It was early in the morning, it seems. The Anvus changed their shift. They were watching him greatly as he ran around the village. He had to make it look like he got tired, which he definitely did not. Oh yeah, sweating. He wasn't sweating. As he turned his gaze away, it was a good thing that he brought this as Naruto had a bottle of water with him, flashing a few droplets on his face to make it seem like he was sweating but he was truly not. Time skip. Kakashi Hatake gather all three of them to inform Naruto that he was the one that had the bells before he destroyed them. So it will be up to him to decide who will become a genin. Sakura knew that she was out. Sasuke was far stronger than her. And Naruto would pick the stronger one. However, Naruto and Kurama already discussed the theory of what the test was truly about. I refuse. Y you what? I refuse. What gives me the right to pick who becomes a genin and who does not? What give me the right to determine one's fates and decide to doom another? If you want to pick, you be the judge. After all, you are the Jonin sensei. Kakashi looked down towards him. The man was surprised. Truly surprised. Sakura herself was shocked. Naruto, she said. And she couldn't believe that he said that. She swore that she would have been outed because she was the weakest amongst them. Even though Naruto did not seem to show anything within the academy, he punched the ground so hard he destroyed the entire field. And Sasuke-kun was... Well, he was Sasuke-kun. Kakashi, I smiled down towards all of them, seemingly happy with Naruto's decision. And just like that, Team 7 became Team 7. Time skip. A month later, we find Team 7 chasing down a cat. However, Naruto, that was not the real Naruto. A distance away from the hidden leaf, near to the mountainside, devoid of human life. Two forces flew to each other as they clashed. Their punch caused the ground to explode. As Naruto's hand was gripped, before a feet slammed into his face, launching him as he crashed into a mountainside. The one that delivered that devastating blow was none other than Kurama. Over the years, they have learned how to separate him in a sense. While he was still bonded to Naruto, he could be out. It was similar to creating a clone, but this wasn't your average clone. 
Kurama looked like Naruto however his eyes were red, with slits in them, and his hair was orange, not yellow, and his clothing was a mixture of his fur, as it was orange, dark orange, and black highlights on the edge of his clothing, a jacket that was open, with black markings twisting around his body, and his whisker marks were thick, more feral and animalistic, and he had fangs in his mouth as well. Kurama thrusts forward at blinding speed. Naruto moved as his fist obliterated the section of that mountain. All of the Nine Tails' power compact in this small frame, but it wasn't only that. He was still a part of Naruto, so the clone was basically a quarter of Naruto's strength. The two of them combined made a phenomenal force. What seemed like seconds, Kurama teleported behind Naruto with just raw speed. Naruto reached out as a fist connected with his hand. The ground shattered as Naruto did not bend a knee as he twists and spun. He spun so hard that he started to create a literal tornado before he released Kurama, throwing him through the sky at speeds. That was demolishing trees as they moved by. As he threw him right into the forest. Despite them fighting into the mountain area. That was how far he threw him. As Naruto came plundering from the sky. Kurama jumped away as Naruto fists. Destroyed that section of the forest. Naruto held his hand out. As ever broken tree and debris. Froze in mid-ear. He then thrust his hand forward as they all launched the Kurama at speeds that made them a deadly weapon. He jumped up in the sky as he landed in a tree nearby. He then ran from that tree as it was obliterated by the shrapnels. He leaped from tree to tree but they were all being destroyed. Realizing that he was screwed as Naruto surrounded him with all sorts of debris. He slammed himself down hard in the ground before. He built up the power in his throat. He then roared, releasing a violent, chaotic, destructive shock wave that shook the entire place and also blowing away all the shrapnels, sending them all sailing away. As Naruto fist connected with his, his reaction time was flawless. The both of them. Gaze locked on one another as they kept on trading blows until Kurama was forced to return back. The timing did not seem to work as a normal sense of time. It depends on how much power he seemed to use while outside of Naruto's body. Naruto wasn't even tired as he looked he had bruises and marks all over his skin. However, they simply ceased to exist. As he looked at his fist and clenched his fist, his body was becoming more durable by the day. The more time passed, the more Naruto started to figure out about this purple force. For one thing, he could teleport now. However, it wasn't a vast teleportation distance, just a small range. However, he believed that he wasn't reaching the full aspect of what he could actually do. The power was still fully unknown. The last time he tried to fully master it, the last time he tried to contain it, he blew his right arm clean off. It was a good thing that his body could regenerate otherwise, he wouldn't have an arm anymore. Even the battles that he faced with Kurama. Kurama was not holding back, his punches was not aimed to cuddle or treat Naruto as some kind of kid. His forces seemed like he wanted to kill Naruto as they were destroying mountain sides. He was gouging outside of mountains. He was obliterating forests with a simple punch. It took him a moment to understand how this form worked. But in this form he could feel the endless amount of energy flowing through the both of them because they were still connected. To this day they still don't understand what is this source of energy and where it came from and what is its purpose. Power like this never comes without a consequence. And they will have to find that out soon enough. Time skip. Naruto simply spam his teleportation. 
as he simply appear and flicker away simply appeared and flicker away it took him no less than a few hours to return back to the village as he flicker in and out flicker in and out after all he was a far distance away it was rather easy to return Kanoha had sensory system all around he could also feel that as well it wasn't just chakra that he could feel in ear he could feel the essence all around him his body now interacted with the world completely different like never before the way he see things the way he feel things if he focus and concentrate enough he could feel the world moving around him and the more time passed the more clear everything was becoming upon returning back home suppressing himself so he wouldn't be sensed by the sensors pinpointing the envoys naruto had his clone open the window near to his bedroom before he took a running start and jump at full force as he flew through the window he stopped himself with telekinesis before he collapsed on the ground the clone and him share a psychic link he knew everything he could see everything that the clone was seeing it was like it was him but at the same time a different entity so he knew that team 7 will be doing their first c-rank mission tomorrow time skip kakashi was gazing towards the group as he was looking like he was reading his book but he was not really focusing on the book that he's read so much times now team 7 wasn't really getting along sasuke was acting like he did not need the team sakura was fawning over sasuke and naruto well he just could not get naruto at first the child showed that he cared about his teammates well care was not exactly the word but he was willing to not decide their fate yet he seemed to be the most standoffish he barely talked to any of them and most of the times the look on his face it was like he was talking to himself Harrison had told him to watch over Naruto strictly this was a mission outside to see how he deal with the outside world in case they ran into a few bandits Kakashi was surprised though as he noticed a puddle well that's interesting he thought to himself with Naruto ever since he was younger he wanted to explore to learn to go out in the real world not be confined in the village because everyone there saw his presence as a nuisance so he wanted to explore the world outside and now that he had his freedom it was different he could literally leave the village whenever he pleased he's done so on a few occasions now and he had to say this world was terrible the people inside of it was not good at all they were wicked cruel remorseless emotionless he knew the transformation dutsu so it was easy for him to play another part of someone else and the things that he's heard the things that he's witnessed and he found himself staying away from it simply watching mankind as they cause destruction upon themselves naruto gaze focused downwards it seems we have company Kurama said and this isn't your average bandit no is it naruto gazed towards kakashi who was calm as ever as they walked by the puddle suddenly the water erupted and they emerged sakura eyes went wide as she saw her sensei grabbed and ripped apart she screamed however her fear seemed to kick her into overdrive as she jumped in front of the client she couldn't allow them to get to tazuna she held the kunai in her hand sasuke threw a kunai as he pinned the chain down followed with a shuriken he jumped and kicked the both of them dislodging the goblet from the right one arm the demon brother was surprised that this brat was so skilled every single brain function or word died in his throat as he felt a sensation behind him his brother even stopped as well the entire place was saturated with an energy unlike any other they ever face he turned only to see the flickering purple eyes gazing down towards him despite the fact that he was taller than naruto 
just the mere presence that he possessed made him seem like a behemoth. His whole body trembling as he tried to understand this sensation that was crushing him as Naruto gazed into his eyes. However, the longer he looked, the more he saw. Pieces. They seem like fractions of reality. They seem like space, time. However, this wasn't space and time. What was it? And how the hell did he know what space and time looked like? What's going on? said Naruto. It seems. Somehow. You're looking at his soul. His soul? said Naruto. Yes. I can feel it. It seems I can process this information, but somehow you don't know what it is, but I do. What? You're looking at his soul, basically. You're looking beyond his eyes, and what you're seeing now is his soul. But this doesn't make any sense. It feels like I can just reach out and... Naruto, touch it! Shock and confusion written across his face. That can't be. If this is his soul, how can I touch it? Snap out of it, he's about to strike. The demon brother, despite his fear, lashed out with his other hand. As the claw gomlet was still there, the chain was connected to another. His intention was to split Naruto across the face, slashing him. However, Naruto twists under the blow. Before he used his two fingers and plunged it, into his shoulder as Naruto disabled the arm all functions by striking it with such a force the man arm limped to the side as Naruto chopped him in the neck with a considerable force his body crumbling in front of Naruto his brother jumped forward aiming to slash at Naruto to grab his brother however Naruto weaved under his slash he stepped to the right. The demon brother lashed out as Naruto saw the kick. Time itself seemed to slow. Naruto simply stepped around the kick before he plunged his hand on the man's leg. A considerable amount of force allowed the leg to crash into the earth as Naruto was not really holding back his strength, having no care for these guys at all. The bones in his legs crack. He cried out in pain as Naruto grabbed his gomlet arm and yanked him forward before slamming his elbow in his face. His nose cracked as he collapsed down to the ground. He was out like a light. The force that Naruto hit him with dusted his brain slightly. Sasuke was shocked as he looked at the ground. He was shocked how easy Naruto dealt with that. Sakura was shocked herself. Kazuna couldn't believe it. Here he thought they were just a bunch of kids that couldn't do anything but yet. Look what they accomplished. He couldn't believe it. As Naruto looked down towards demon brothers when Kakashi arrived on the scene. He knew that Kakashi was alive the entire time. Time skip. Kazuna pleaded and begged them to help him. And the group decided to go on. Sasuke wanted to fight. To show that he was just as good as Naruto. Sakura did so because of peer pressure and Naruto was trying to understand more. It seems what he needed was to fight a true enemy. Perhaps he did not see Kurama as an enemy. Perhaps that was a reason besides. It was a version of himself that he was fighting. I still don't understand said Naruto as he was speaking with Kurama. How was I able to touch his soul? There are still so many mysteries to this purple force that you possess. I have no idea how it happened, but I knew what I saw. It was his soul. You said that you know more than me. You could understand more than me, and yet you can't tell me how I was able to touch his soul. I don't know everything, you damn brat. I'm not sure what happened, but you did touch it. I felt contact, but it seems you could go even further. Further? What do you mean? Manipulation. You're saying I could manipulate another soul? Well, you will have to try. Kram said as Naruto wonder, what would that entail? He truly wonder if there was no limits to what he could do. He truly wonder. As Naruto felt it, 
There were two of them. Kakashi once again. Perhaps he was acting. Or maybe he was not the greatest sensor. As they got off the boat, he could feel them watching from a distance. Whoever they were, they were about to strike soon. As the group kept on walking when they heard rustling in one of the bushes. However, a rabbit came out of it. Kakashi then heard the sound. Duck, he said, tackling Tazuna down to the ground. As everyone got down, a blade slammed into a tree ahead. Standing there was the demon of the mist. Zabuza, formation V now. Kakashi told them. Zabuza started to spread his mist around the area. So much chakra to even destroy the Sharingan site. Naruto closed his eyes and focus. Despite his eyes being closed, he could see a pattern of reality. What he saw was a space. He could see Zabuza. His outline was dark as he walked in a white, tranquil space. His movements were fast as he flashed around. As Naruto followed him within his mind, when he sensed it, his eyes snapped open as he shoved his hand up. Zabuza materialized as Naruto was surprised. He thought that he already arrived, but no. He did it before he arrived. Naruto had pushed outwards. The purple energy surged, throwing Zabuza back. He crashed hard, but he recovered. Zabuza was shocked and confused. What the hell? Until Kakashi arrived and slammed down on his blade. Almost slamming the blade into his chest, but he brought his blade up just in time. The both of them started to clash. What? What just happened? Sasuke said, looking towards Naruto confused, trying to understand what just happened, as he did not see. He only felt the shifting in the ear of the breeze. And then, he saw Sabuza being thrown. Sasuke turned his gaze though when he felt it, the pressure coming from the two of them. So this was it. This was a battle between two Joni and Levin ninjas. As they clashed against one another. Their attack was violent. Vicious. Until. Kakashi messed up. And he got kicked onto the water and trapped. He knew that he screwed up. Naruto possessed great strength however. What he lacked was the experience to use that strength. And Zabuza would use that against him. Run. Get out of here he said. As Zabuza created two water clones. They can't go further than the caster. And he has to stay here to maintain this prison. Go now. Sakura was frightened not knowing what to do. As she looked at them. Sasuke bit down hard. Keep on telling himself that he wasn't going to run. Never again. His gaze snapped upwards. As much as he didn't like it. Hey. I have a plan, he said, looking towards Naruto as sweat was running down the side of his head. Over to the other side, the two clones were making their way, when Naruto suddenly stepped forward. You said it yourself, he spoke out loud. Those that leave their teammates behind, are even worse than trash. Kakashi's own words were being used back against him. As Naruto shot forward, Surprising Zabuza clone by his speed and real Zabuza as well. The clone smirked though. As the kid was coming in hot as he brought the blade down. However, Naruto suddenly ducked. A Fuma shuriken right over his head. Stabbed through the clone's chest as it turned into water. As Naruto reached out and gripped, said Fuma shuriken. He dug his fingers into the metal. He then spun and launched it. The speed that he threw the thing at, the clone had no choice, it couldn't even move. It ripped through its chest like a bullet, tearing through it as it burst into water. Naruto then rushed towards Zabuza once again. Zabuza prepared himself as he lifted his blade when Sasuke jumped over Naruto's head as he launched. A massive fireball out of his mouth, Zabuza. Threw his blade in the sky as he flashed through. One-handed signs. He brought his hand up as the water shoot up. A wall. That stopped Sasuke fireball. As steam filled the area. 
but you to burst right through it though. You're mine, he said. His fist pulled back. Zabuza's eyes went wide as he felt that pressure unlike any before. His whole body seemed to get nervous as he jumped away, landing quite a distance. Zabuza has faced many in the past, and yet up against this child's body was warning him of grave danger, so he moved. Kakashi started to cough slightly as he was now free, as Naruto hopped back to the shore. Kakashi gave them an eye smile. Don't worry, he said. That won't happen again as he climb on top of the surface. I'll end this. Kakashi dominate him. To the point where Zabuza believed in that he was seen in the future. As Naruto eyes was taking a photographic recording of everything that happened. Naruto could feel their movements. As his body seemed to adapt to their movements. He watched as they threw. He watched their techniques. Naruto gazed down wondering. He held his hand out as the water in front of him shifted slightly. Well, now that's interesting. Kurama said, realizing what just happened a moment ago. Naruto watches the hunter and arrive after Kakashi. Took Zabuza down. Naruto knew that it was a fate but he did not say anything because he wanted to continue to test his power against the enemy. So he kept his mouth shut. As Kakashi fell, time skip. Kakashi informed them that the hunter was still alive, and it was time that they begin their training after he recovered. It was the second day he was still on crutches, though. Tree walking, that was their first thing. Root had never think of that before. He's hopped from buildings with ease, but he's never walked on a vertical surface. But now that he's think about it. Why would he need that when he possess his telekinesis to move objects? He can simply move himself. Well, he had to make it look believable. Surprisingly though, Sakura was able to get it rather easily. Turns out that because of her small chakra capacity, she could manipulate it quite easily. Sasuke was a bit furious as he wasn't able to get it. And Kakashi mocked him about that just to put a little fire in his step. Leaving the both of them there, Naruto mind was occupied with other things. The fact that he could not get tired, that was a big bonus that he could use his time to think about other things while doing menial tasks. Hey, Naruto. Naruto blink. Sasuke was the one that called out to him. What is it, he asked. Sasuke was looking rather nervous. What, what did Sakura say about what she did. Naruto looked towards him. He just stared at him making Sasuke feel rather uncomfortable. Stop looking at me like that he said. I'm just surprised. Of you asking someone for something. The way you act. You act like you could do everything on your own. Tch, forget it he said. Calm down and stop being such an emo said Naruto. I myself don't like to talk that much but you. Put me to shame with your acting regards. I said forget about it. Just be quiet and listen, said Naruto. She said the first step that she took. The amount of chakra that she used. It simply felt comfortable. So she simply used that amount of chakra going up. And I guess it worked. But she makes it sound more easier than it looks. Sasuke glanced up towards a tree. Time skip. Both Naruto and Sasuke enter. Sasuke was starving. Kakashi was taking notes of Naruto. He wasn't tired. The entire day. Yes, he had stamina more than most, but he wasn't sweating. And he did not seem tired in the slightest. And Kakashi has been watching him. As they sat down to eat, Inere, the young boy, made it known to them that they were going to die. And that they should leave this place. Naruto had enough of him though. Shut up. Everyone turned towards Naruto. Naruto, you can't say that. He's just a kid, Sakura said. Naruto gave her a look. As she seemed to shrink back in her chair. As he looked towards the boy. Inira felt his knees trembling slightly. 
You're just a child, said Newtown. You don't understand what you're talking about. If you think that you're the only one in this world that is suffering, you are sadly mistaken. However, I'm not trying to downplay your suffering, but before you speak or run that mouth of yours, you need to think. You're a child, but you're not in a world where you can be a child for too long. Naruto said as he got up, he turned towards Nami. Thank you for the food, he said. As he started to walk away, where are you going, said Kakashi? I'm going to take a walk. Don't worry, I'm not going to go anywhere far. With that, he left as Inira ran up the stairs. Sakura realized that she did not know that much about Naruto. The reason why he was so quiet all the time. Sasuke was pretty cool and that but Naruto was... He wasn't bad he was just different. Maybe she should get to know him. He did give her a harsh look a moment ago. And they were on a team now they were teammates. Time skip. Naruto found himself in the forest. He realized something today while he was faking. Trying to tree walk. He closed his eyes. The breeze around him, the ear around him, suddenly ceased as he felt like he was not within this dimension anymore. As Naruto felt so calm, so light, when he opened his eyes, his feet were no longer on the ground. Naruto was confused. He wasn't used in his telekinesis, no he was not. How the hell was he flying then? He moved gently. As he moved around, it felt unusual, strange. He flew till he was high as a tree as he looked around. He looked down toward his hands as he saw the purple energy coursing through his skin, his bones, his DNA, everything about him. What the hell, Nuta thought to himself. He was growing more and more. His eyes could see this. He couldn't see this before. It seems. The more time passed, the more your body is evolving. First, it took away your weakness off. Loss of stamina. And loss of strength. It seems. From what I've noticed, it's turning you into something that can withstand. A great amount of force. You mean... The force power, said Naruto. No. I'm not sure what it is, but it's like it's turning you into a host, similar to what you were before, a Jinjuliki. Why do you say that? Your body is evolving at a rate of holding something. It's like it's becoming a perfect shell. I've noticed strange things happening more and more. I'm not sure if this is the truth. Or if I'm even anywhere close to what is truly going on. However, we're dealing with forces here that neither of us have ever encountered before. As Naruto landed towards the ground, he kept on walking as he sat down, wondering. What was the price of gaining such power? Kurama said it himself that there was a high price to pay. For any power like this, power was never truly that free. There must be a price, something that he was not seeing. He didn't want to be used, to be manipulated. He didn't want to be tricked and fooled. He's been through that already and he refused to do it again. The next morning, Haku found Naruto. Believing that he was sleeping, it would be easy to simply end his life right here and now. However, as she stopped there looking down towards him, she reached out, but she instead grabbed his shoulder and shook him awake. His eyes took her off guard. For a moment, they seemed like an endless swirl of purple, but they flicker back to blue. She blinked, wondering if she was seeing things. You shouldn't be sleeping out here, you might catch a cold. Luther gripped her hand. Let me guess. You're trying to find herbs to help Zabuza. Haku was shocked, not expecting him to know. She quickly reached for her sandbonds, but 
Luther gripped her other hand. She tried to kick off. However, his strength was beyond her. She was shocked, unable to remove herself as Naruto gazed into her eyes. Once again, he found himself near her soul. This time, he reached out and gripped into it, trying to manipulate it as Kurama said. This was a feel that he never reached before. So this was, suddenly, something happened. It seems like he was doing more than he should. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Naruto was looking at himself. What the hell? The purple energy coming off of him started to spiral. As Naruto saw himself in a thousand different angles, he gripped his skull and screamed. He dropped down to his knees, releasing Haku. Her eyes were completely purple. As her body was trembling as she collapsed on her back. As Naruto gripped the ground and teared into it. Something was trying to peer into his mind. Kurama could feel it as well. A force. It was so powerful. Something was trying to crush him and swallow him whole. As Naruto gripped his skull, Kurama felt the control of Naruto's body slipping to the point where he could take control as he slipped in. He slammed his fist into the ground as he looked up. He was biting so hard down on his lip that it was bleeding as his gaze turned completely purple. The ear in front of him seemed to release a violent shock wave that ruptured the ear violently before Naruto collapsed. Face first. Naruto's eyes snapped open as he looked around. What the hell? What happened? Something or someone tried to manipulate your mind. You saw it, didn't you? Yeah, I did, said Naruto. While his brain was feeling like it was being stretched and pushed, he saw something. It was when he tried to manipulate. Haku soul. Wait, how did he know that name? Why did he... Naruto was confused to this information. It felt like he knew this Haku person. Having their memories, their recollection. Seeing her kill... Wait, it's not a her. It's a guy. Seeing him kill his own father because he came after him and his mother. It seems like you somehow got all the information from that individual's brain. But in doing so, you expose yourself to something. Nur to remember the view clearly. It seemed like it was a throne in the middle of emptiness. A being. He could not see the face, but he sat on said throne. And he did not look all too well. I was right, Kramer said. There is something higher at play here. Nothing about this is natural. Wait, where did Haku go, said Naruto. He heard footsteps as he turned to see. It was Sakura. Naruto, it's time to come back, she said. Naruto then realized that it was night time. He was out for a really long time. But what the hell happened to Haku? He looked over towards Sakura as he made his way towards her. Hey, Naruto, she said. He glanced towards her. I know you and I haven't really gotten along that well. But we are on a team now. I suppose that we should get along. While that was going on, Haku was applying the herbs to Zabuza. To accelerate his healing. Zabuza felt something off. Hey, are you okay? He asked. Yes. I'm quite fine, Zabuza-sama, Haku said, as calm as ever. Zabuza has known Haku for a long time, and something just felt wrong, off, about something that he could not put his finger on. Something wasn't right. Something wasn't right at all. Yet, Haku seemed perfectly normal. 
something wasn't right though as Zabuza grabbed the blade. He placed it towards Haku's throat. Who the hell are you? He said. I've known Haku for a very long time now. And you're not Haku. Why would you say that? I've shown all. His emotions. His feelings towards you. I replicate them perfectly. So I'm right. Who the hell are you? Oh, do not worry. I'm simply borrowing this body for a test of mine. And I will need you for that test as well. Haku eyes flash purple as Zabuza eyes turn purple as well. Forget all of this. Only remember that everything shall be fine. And your recovery is coming along quite well. Damn it, Haku, that hurts. I apologize, Zabuza sama. Haku said, working on his wounds. As Zabuza leaned back, closing his eyes. Back at the house. Naruto couldn't understand what happened to Haku. Was his body destroyed? He didn't know. The fox was unable to see beyond what he saw. Nothing else when he passed out. As Naruto was, wondering who was that being resided in that throne. If Kurama was right, was that person aiming to take him over like he was some sort of host? Well, he refused. He wasn't going to let some parasite take over his body. He was already stuck with one who he was getting along with. Screw whatever that was, he wasn't about to let it happen. On the end of the week, Kakashi found Naruto sleeping. They decided to head along, making him stay here just in case any threat resides. However, Naruto was no longer in need of sleep. So why was he- Naruto jumped out of bed. What the hell? Naruto gripped his skull. It's been three days now since his encounter with Haku. Ever since, Naruto felt this strange sensation. And what was more odd when he tried to dive into that feeling? It knocked him into a space that he couldn't quite understand. However, it was a lot for his mind. Do you have any idea what was going on? It was like your mind was trying to consume. A whole lot of information at once, but it backfired and failed. What does this have to do with Haku? I'm not sure, said Krama. As Naruto got up, he prepared himself as he walked out, wondering where everyone was. As he walked out to see Iniri on the pier, he jumped down. Iniri turned. Where is everyone, said Naruto. They left. They left? Yes, they left. They went to the bridge with my grandfather. They probably saw him asleep and decided to just let him sleep and headed off ahead. As Naruto massaged his temples even more, wondering what the hell was going on. Still having no idea what happened with Haku and why was this happening now? Hey, you okay? Iniri asks looking up towards Naruto. Yeah, I'm just... Naruto heard a scream. Iniri walked away, wondering who... Why does that sound... Iniri took off. It was his mom. As Naruto was about to chase after him when suddenly... He dropped down to his knees. He gripped his skull. As Naruto saw an image. A massive ice dome. Made from ice mirrors. The image of Haku smiling, somehow looking at him through, flashes through his head. It was calling out to him, telling him to come. When Naruto looked back up, he saw Iniri rushing in, and a blade was about to slice a child in half. Naruto took off at his fastest. Time itself seemed to slow down. As Naruto arrived and crashed. Head first in the bandits. Every single bone in the man's body shatter. As he launched away, the other one, Naruto grabbed his wrist and break it. Before he uppercut him with such force. He sailed. However, Naruto was holding his hand. 
as he cancelled the pressure. His entire structure of his skull completely shattered as Naruto tossed his body away, not allowing the child to see the gruesome scene. Snami blinked as she was confused, Inari blinked as well. Snami threw herself on her son, hugging him. Inari didn't understand. It's you. You, you saved me. Yes, I did. Remember you going on about your nonsense about there being no hero? Well, you knew that you stood no chance and yet you ran right in to save your mother. What other word do you call that? Inira looked up towards Naruto as Naruto turned his gaze. I'll make sure no one else comes this way. Keep your mom safe, kid. As Naruto took off, rushing as fast as he could, Meanwhile on the bridge, Sasuke, with his now awakened Sharingan looked up towards his target. Sasuke felt like this guy was simply toying with him. Haku gaze was fixated a distance away. Well, whoever that was, was fixated as a smile appeared under the mask. Yes, come to me. As Haku emerged from the mirror, confusing the tired Sasuke, he held out Senbons in both hands when suddenly, the mirror behind Sasuke shattered into countless pieces. Sakura was shocked as something simply whipped by her. She didn't see it. As Naruto landed inside of the dome, the mirror quickly recovering. Sasuke looked at Naruto. Wait, what are you? Haku breezed past Sasuke. As Uchiha fell unconscious, Naruto Gaze turned murderous, do not worry. He's not dead. I wouldn't hurt you that way. After all, you seem to have a lot of understanding with this one. Despite, you're not showing it that well. Who the hell are you? Naruto said. What are you talking about? I'm the one you met in the forest. You're not Haku. What are you? said Naruto. They were close to one another. As Haku reached up and took off the mask. Well, you're right about that. I'm not this vessel. I'm something else. Why don't I show you? Boom! A violent explosion. It was Naruto's body. It slammed through the mirror. Slammed on the bridge three times. It slammed through countless trees. It slammed through countless giant stone formations as it crashed deep within the forest, leaving a large trench. Naruto lie there. What the hell? When he looked up as he saw Haku in mid ear gazing down towards him, Haku held his hand up. Naruto eyes widened. But guys, the end subs are right here. If you want to see next part and do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to stay posted. But I'm off for now. See you guys soon. Peace.